Charlie TCG here and welcome back to my channel. As you know this week, I'm going to cover lots of stuff from NAIC. Yesterday we did a huge breakdown exactly what did well, the meta percentage and how the format's going to evolve. And today I want to break down more of the decks in further. We're going to look at United Wings, an absolute surprise, the return of some sort of night marchy sort of deck and even how the contention game top eight at the event. So it's honestly incredible to see an international champion kind of pilot this deck to a really good finish. So it was obviously played by Alex Szymanski, and they in fact got a top 64, unfortunately losing their last two rounds, piloting some very, very bad auto losses for this deck, making sure they were out of contention. But it's really good to see this deck really soar to good heights. Another person did in fact play United Wings, finished a little bit below Alex, getting that top 128 finish. Really, really good to see that United Wings has performed pretty well. For those who don't know what United Wings did, it does 20 more damage for each of these um, Pokemon with United Wings, which are in the discard pile of the attack. So kind of if you have the whole all of them and discipline attack with Ditto, you're doing 240 damage. Really, really powerful, absolutely huge amount of damage because you're getting those big one-hit kills on Gardevoirs and the likes of Lugia V-Stars and Mew V-Max as well. So this is very good because it's hitting those relevant weaknesses. As being a single prize attackers, you're pretty much two-shotting every other sort of card in the in the format, which I really like in this sort of deck. And that can really kind of slow the opponent down for you utilizing Clap Stadium, so you're never going to have that two-prize liability of Squawkabilly out in play. So let's jump into the list, kind of talk to you exactly what each card means and exactly how this deck did perform so well. So we do have to play four of the Murkrow, Watchel, and Flamingo. These are very, very powerful because your Murkrow and Watchel are your attackers. They're the ones that are going to be doing pretty good damage in that sort of field and kind of have unfortunately low HP. But Flamingo is another very good attack attacker, but it has an incredible insta flock ability, which lets you search your deck for up to three more flamingos and put them into your hand. This is really, really powerful because it's a good insta play and it works synergy by getting the three more flamingos in there, which can easily discard the likes of Research, Serena, Zinnia, Ultra Ball, as well as Squawkabilly. This is very, very powerful as well to constantly kind of train with that to get as, as many of these in Pokemon in your discard part as much as possible. Another card that really helps with that is Squawkabilly EX. We in fact play two of them. Even though you can only use it on your first turn of the game, you can only use one ability pretty much per game. The Squawk and Seize ability is incredibly useful in the first turn of the game. Having that instant setup by making you discard your hand and draw a fresh hand of six, it's really, really powerful. Even if you go first or second, if you go first, it's absolutely incredible. Can pretty much bin the hand like your own, your own supporter in a way. And you can easily get this way of okay, utilizing your Fago and discarding as many of your um, United Wings as possible to so really fuel up the attack as quickly as possible. I really like this sort of effect. In this one. Ditto is one of these really good attackers. That sudden transformation, which can use any of the attacks from the Pokemon in your disco pile, except they don't have any rule box. It's a way to your copy Murkrow and Watchel just kind of deal as much damage as possible. 240 damage is pretty good if you have like with Ditto out there with a darkness energy onto it. 220 if you've got double turbo. So you kind of want to deal with those huge amount of damage, potentially two-shotting or even one-shotting some of these and basic V or EX is kind of out there. That's why Ditto is really good. There's others are attacker in there. We don't play too many of them because we also play Rescue Carrier. Mana Fee is definitely in there, which is absolutely important in this deck. Try and protect you from Radiant Greninja as well as Magnus and V-Star is really, really powerful. As we know, this deck pretty much really, really badly loses to um, Sableye and any Lost Box decks. By having loads of 60 HP Pokemon, they're very easy to be kind of picked away and potentially your opponent could be taking two prizes, which is pretty much what is the downside of this sort of deck. Potentially when um, Sableye kind of rotates out in a couple of years' time, this deck may seem a bit more of a, um, in a bit more focus, but as of right now, you're trying to protect yourself from any bench damage as possible, and Manaphy is definitely the way for it. This deck does have a pre pretty decent draw factor, and with the likes of a 3-3 of Curlia. Curlia's with that amazing refinement ability, with an ability to discard the card and draw two. Again, ways to kind of get rid of as much of your um, United Wing Pokemon in the discard part as quickly as possible, so you're trying to fuel up the damage to do those big one-hit codes, or potentially the two shotters in the other one. I really like this sort of finished synergy in this deck. It works really well. There's no Battle Compressor, which worked with Night March back in the day, but having Curlia is definitely a really good option in this deck. You'll constantly be able to draw, and it's kind of a bit of your Iona proof. We also then have the Buddy Catch Gallade, which pretty much means gets you search for a supporter card, getting those boss, getting a Serena, or potentially even the Clara or Zinnia's Resolve, getting those extra discard or gusting effect, having a guarantee as a Pokemon is really, really powerful. And this other Gallade here, which has 60 more for each of the opponent's Visa out in play, this is definitely kind of the um, the Arceus counter in a way. Kind of we've seen a load of this big Arceus Duraludon, Umbreon. Obviously, we saw that absolutely dominate the tournament by being pretty much the most dominant way to play Arceus it, it is with Umbreon plus... Um, a friend of some sort. So having a galley down here, kind of like having an instant answer to Arceus, is really, really powerful. 
So that's kind of the Pokemon lineup. Let's look at the supporter cards. We play four copies of Research in here. Research is definitely the key supporter in this deck. You want to be constantly be burning through as much of your resources as quickly as possible, getting as many of your um, United Wings in the discard pile as quickly as possible, so you're getting those big one-hit KOs, potentially those huge amount of damage later on in the game. This is definitely working well for this, but having other sort of draw cards like Serena and Zinnia's Resolve, making sure you're trying to get all those Pokemon discard pile as quickly as possible and as effectively as well. One copy of Clara is really good because you're constantly being able to get back your Murkrows and more importantly, Darkness Energy and Ditto and Manaphy and even potentially Curlos or Gallades. Really good to get any of the Pokemon you might want to have back in there because once these Pokemon are gone, they normally pretty much disappeared unless you have the likes of Rescue Carrier or Reuse them with Power Pad. So that's kind of the supporters. You're kind of going a bit more um, disruptive, but mainly you're focusing on that discard effect of that drawing ability. Poke the um, the search cards, we do play four copies of Level Ball, four copies of Ultra Ball, one Nest Ball, and two History and Heavy Balls. Serious Heavy Balls, you do not want to prize the United Wings if you're against the deck, because you need to be doing those big one-hit KOs on, or getting a huge amount of damage on there here. So playing double Heavy Ball means you're pretty much guaranteed you're always going to get any of them which are in the prize cards. Making sure that you're trying to get all those liabilities out, kind of getting them in the field, is definitely important. Nest Ball is really, and Level Ball are really, really good. Because you're pretty much a load of your, you play a ton of basic Pokemon. This is a way for you to even search out the Squawkabilly and not be too worried about using its ability straight away. Ultra Ball, definitely the best um, um, draw card in this deck for the searching your Pokemon, by having an instant discarding effect of any of your United Wings. And Level Ball, you play so many under 90 HP. Need I say less, it's an incredible draw support, uh, sorry, Pokemon support in the style deck. We played two copies of Switch. We do play quite a lot of them to, to retreat Pokemon, sometimes even one. And you'd always have very um, reluctant in your energy attachment because you're never really going to be there to always have two different energies out in play. So having that instant switch ability is really, really strong. Echoing Horn is definitely an absolutely amazing card in this our deck. Teaming it up with a Buddy Catch Worm Gallade and with an Echoing Horn is really, really powerful to constantly be recycling, like, for example, a... Um, and Lukia V, um, v constantly kind of like get a KO on that, and then reutilize that again by bringing out with Echoing Horn plus Buddy Catch to get Boss Orders is really, really strong. And that's why I absolutely love this style of this deck. And Echoing Horn is absolutely incredible by constantly getting that extra KO, which your opponent may not be seeing. Clap Stadium works well, not just by removing your two prize liability or Squawkabilly, but also getting rid of any of your United Wings out and play to get that additional 20 more damage that you might need. And to round up the list, we play. Four copies of double turbo and four darkness energies. I kind of like this very streamlined, very slim sort of energy count. We're not going to need too many of them. We really want to capitalize on that searching effect to get out to do that big 240 damage as quickly as possible and have that big threat on the field. I really like this deck here, but how did it actually perform over well in obviously NAIC? So we just look at some of those positive matchups here. Kind of seen this big negative ones are Lost Box and Rapid Strike Box. The reason why this, because in fact, he did in fact lose to Cyrus's um, um, Rapid Strike Box deck because of how powerful Urshifu is and obviously Intellion VMAX getting that um, sniping capability is definitely what this deck really struggles with. Lost Zone Box as well, it has the huge threat of Sableye as well as um, Rain and Greninja. So multiple ways to kind of go through Ma Manaphy as well, which is definitely quite scary. And we're even seeing the rise in Sheen Powerless with having the likes of Canceling Clones, potentially playing one to even two of them then, not only to go around Manaphy to kind of go through that, but also getting the likes of Ting Lu. So we're definitely seeing that more of an increase in that for um, Sheen Pound. But all that being said, it has some decent um, positive matchups there by being the likes of Lugia, Gardevoir, Arceus, um, Garatina, and Mew VMAX. Hitting the relevant weakness against all of these sort of cards is really, really powerful, and that's definitely where this deck really thrives upon. It kind of looked to see if Gardevoir and Lugia and Mew definitely potentially in the top five sort of options of the decks. I can hit for weakness against all of them and have pretty good, good match, but they don't have any way to really damage any of the bench cards. I'm in a really good situation. That's why I think this deck performs so well, because it kind of really utilizes its sort of weakness and, and hitting for those weaknesses. And kind of it knew exactly if I miss um, Lost Box and potentially Rapid Strike, even though that wasn't exactly a huge talk report, but now it definitely will be, I can instantly do incredibly well about it. So that's definitely something I really like about this deck, kind of hitting those weaknesses. Definitely can see how this deck kind of evolves. Will this be a fun sort of archetype in this sort of format? Will we see it any more after NAIC? I think potentially, yes. We could see this list kind of slowly evolve. We'll see how it goes in Worlds. Again, we're getting no new cards for Worlds happening next month. So we're going to kind of see exactly how this format is truly going to evolve and truly develop how this could potentially improve on United Wings and have Aspiranski put the deck on the radar. 
is this a list to kind of be playing around with to kind of how you utilizing other sort of tech cards in here i think we're just going to see how the online sort of formats kind of change and if there's any other sort of league cups and stuff like that around in this sort of format we can kind of get a little bit of it to build up a new sort of meta for worlds but definitely united wings i'm absolutely incredibly happy to see it perform incredibly well if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to like and subscribe, and I'll be back again tomorrow with another NAIC breakdown of a deck. Tomorrow we will be looking at Cyrus's winning um, Rapid Strike Box deck, and I can't wait to kind of dive into it and see exactly how they did incredibly well. So please make sure to like and subscribe, and don't forget to join the channel if you're a brand new member. It will really help and support and exactly see how you can improve the content going forward. I will see you tomorrow. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.